Hey, so I'm making this video because I'm a Nikon guy and today I bought another Fuji. I bought two Sonys on the way to buying this Fuji. I bought this Fuji because of the limitations of this Fuji. So this one is the original X100, which is an awesome little camera. Really, it's true that people say it just brings the joy back to photography. Um, the original X100 is a little bit slow, slow to focus, a little bit under CPU power. Um, also, it's the 35 equivalent focus lens, 35 millimeter equivalent. I'm more of a 50 guy, so this um, X-T1 is very, very affordable. This body was under $400. Um, this is a 50 millimeter equivalent lens, so 35 millimeter crop factor is 50 millimeter equivalent. Um, pick that up as my go everywhere camera. We'll see how that goes. It's pretty compact, but it made me think, why? You know, Nikon people are talking. I'm moving to Sony. I'm moving to Fuji, and why wouldn't they? Because they're awesome devices. Why is it for Nikon people? It should be. I'm DSLR or I'm mirrorless because we should have a Nikon mirrorless camera. Now my belief is that when Nikon sat down and planned their mirrorless range, their target audience was people who were buying this, these little things, and they built the Nikon One camera and its different associated lenses um, as a step up for the people who are buying these little things. At the same time, that audience was buying these little things and didn't need any camera. So, I think Fuji and Sony were smarter and they were more thinking about how do we create a camera that's an alternative to the SLR? Um, how do we create a camera that's an alternative to the entry level DSLR and work our way up from there? And they've done an amazing job. So, here's what I don't understand what Nikon cannot do. This is an exquisite little thing. Nikon have got the DF, which is about the same size as the EL. It's about the same size and weight as that. Very similar to that in terms of look and feel. A little bit bigger than that. Um, they've built that. It's awesome. It's basically a little bit of an overgrown one of those. Why can't they build something like that with a crop sensor? And why can't they make it work with our lenses? So here's a little bit of, here's a little bit of science. People, people often say how mirrorless make everything so more compact. It's kind of true. There's science involved here. There's physics involved here. That's a constant f4, 70 to 210. That's a constant 2.8, 80 to 200. So that does a little bit more, but with this does one stop more of light. The reason they are a different size isn't because Nikon suddenly got worse at making lenses when they made this one. It's because physics. So people talk about uh, mirrorless cameras being more compact. Sure, the body is, but... There's a 50 millimeter pancake lens from the 80s, Nikon. There is a slightly older era f2 50 millimeter. There is a slightly bigger f1.4 of the same era, slightly bigger because it has to let in more light. Physics. Um, this came after that, very similar lens, slightly smaller. But if you look at those two, and in fact, if you look at this modern 50 millimeter, the distance between the glass at the back and the glass at the front is pretty much the same. There's a lot of dishing. In this lens, I imagine it's got some focus motor stuff going on up there. Otherwise, would they, why would they make it? Why would they make it so deep? There must be some reason why they made it so deep because half of that, the glass is front glass is halfway down there. So here's what Nikon need to do. Nikon have the challenge in that, let's see, there's my oldest Nikon. Lens flange is about half an inch out from the body of the camera. 
film is at the back. So in fact, the distance from that flange to the film is 46 millimeters, which is quite a lot. Um, that's Canons of the era are about 42. Um, so Nikon's kind of up there. But what Nikon has, have done that's really awesome is they've retained that. Uh, they've retained that distance. So that camera, through these cameras, through autofocus film cameras, same distance to digital SLRs, same distance. And that's why you can take a modern digital SLR Nikon and put that lens on it. Because the distance from that flange to the sensor is the same as the distance from that flange to the film. So what does that mean for what does that mean for smaller cameras? Um, really, what it means is all Nikon has to do, if they create a camera like this, where the distance is considerably less on a Fuji at 17.6 millimeters, so like 20, about 28 millimeters less. In fact, that much less. All Nikon has to do is do what everybody else is doing, but do it better for their customers. So there's a little thing, and I can put any, this is just manual, this is manual aperture, it's not very smart, it's just a tube. So I can put my Nikon lens on there, and it's spaced so that that flange distance, the distance from the back of that lens to that sensor, is the same as the distance from the back of that lens to the film, same in that. So, but look at that. It's the same size. There's no, there's no magic that these cameras are doing. This is a pretty long lens for 35mm f2. That's like it's not like it's it's not like it's compact. So Nikon, please create something like this. Go ahead and create a bunch of lenses that are new specifically for this, but give us a smart one of these. Give us one of these for the Nikon mirrorless camera that has sensors in it, um, that has the aperture shutdown mechanism in it, so that we can take all of our Nikon glass and use them on our Nikon, Nikon mirrorless and it all just works. Please do that. Because then we don't have to buy Fuji and then we don't have to buy Sony. So, in a way, I've been waiting for the DF2 I've had desires for it. I really wish it was more the kind of the size of the FG, which is a little bit smaller than what it is right now, but that little FG, in fact, the original, sure they had to pack a lot of electronics in, wish Nikon, I wish that was the Nikon FG. Um, fake battery pack, nice hand grip, it's about the same, if not more innards as the current Nikon FDF, but that would have been badass, because the, the Nikon DF is not an easy camera to hold. You can't hang it off your hand like that. Um, and it's, it's a considerably bigger body. The Nikon DF should have been like that, with a fake motor one grip, uh, battery and card in the bottom, display on the back. I mean, size-wise, that's a monster. That's tiny. That should have been the DF. In fact, you know what, Nikon, if you make a DF2 that's this kind of format, slightly smaller in the hand, um, with that fake grip like that, to make it more manageable, I'll buy that. You know what, I'll buy that and I'll carry it every day and I'll sell my Fuji. How's that for a deal?